Hi, I'm Dr. Davide Bruno from Liverpool John Morris University. I am a senior lecturer in psychology and uh, this course is on memory. The first section is on the multi-store model of memory by Atkinson and Schiffer particularly. However, before we start talking about that, I'd like to introduce the main concepts of memory, particularly the, memory, the three memory stages. So in order to understand memory and memory research, we need to know that memory usually is subdivided into encoding, storage and retrieval. So encoding is the phase at which we acquired information, so how we learn things, how the external world gets transformed into something that we actually memorize. The storage is how we keep, preserve, maintain the information, and then retrieval is how we get the information back out again. So essentially what we think of memory usually, remembering things. The multi-store memory model is primarily concerned with how we store the information and it's more of a memory system, so it describes how memory is structured. And um, the most famous, most important model is the Atkinson and Schifrin's model from 1968, which actually dates back, if you want to understand how people came about thinking of memory in that way, you have to go back a bit further as well and go into the field of attention. In 1958, a, a popular model of attention was published by Donald Broadbent, where he described, he tried to explain what we call the cocktail party effect. So basically, you imagine that you are um, talking to someone, and there's a bunch of other conversations going on at the same time around you, and while you're engrossed in your conversation with the other person, you're focusing on that, you can still, if somebody mentions your name some, somewhere across the room, or they say something that you're interested in, like, I don't know, pizza or something, uh, you will actually uh, be able to pay attention to the other conversation going on at the same time, even if you weren't listening to that. So how does that work? Well, the idea was that basically we keep all of our sensory information, everything that's going on around us, uh, everything that we hear is maintained for a very brief period of time somewhere in our mind, in our brain, but we filter in only what we are interested in. If something then interesting pops up, we will be able to filter that in. So that requires that there is something, a store within our memory that allows us to keep for a brief period of time pretty much everything that is around us. And that's how we get to the first stage of the first step or component of the multi-store memory model or rather first store which is the sensory stores. So you have three stores in the multi-store memory model, sensory stores, short-term memory, and long-term memory stores. The sensory stores are the most basic, let's say. They keep the sensory information for a very, very brief period of time. By sensory information, I primarily refer to auditory information, which is stored in the echoic store, and visual information that is stored in the iconic store. These are modality specific, meaning that they only have either visual or auditory information, not both, they're essentially independent and they keep information again, as I said, for a very, very short time. The um, iconic store, so the visual information store, is thought to keep visual information in for about half a second, maybe a second, not much more than that. Different theorists or different researchers will differ on their opinion on that, but it's very brief. And it's basically our port of contact with the rest of the world because we don't perceive reality directly, we perceive it through the information that we acquire and we maintain in this short-term visual store. The same applies also to the short-term echoic store, which should allow us to maintain information for about two to four seconds and not more than that. So what happens then? The information that is kept, filtered in, will then pass on to the short-term memory store, short-term memory buffer, otherwise it will be lost. And then we get to the dis distinction between short and long-term memory, which has been part of cognitive psychology for a long time, although there is a few um, researchers who would question whether there is really a distinction between short and long-term memory. But in this case, the multi-store memory model tells us there is a distinction. So you have information that's passed on into the short-term memory store. The short-term memory store has more capacity than the sensory stores in the sense that you can have information in the short-term memory store for maybe, say, 10 seconds. And then the information is either lost or it's passed on to the long-term memory store. 
Also, how much information can you have in the shorter memory store is something that's been studied, that was subject of study early on. So we have the um, quite popular 1956 George Miller's paper about the magic number 7 plus minus 2, indicating that basically you can have a range between 5 and 9 pieces of information at once in your short-term memory. Actually, by pieces of information, Miller intended what he called chunks, chunks of information. So what's a chunk? Um, let's say that I say uh, BMI. These are three letters. If you know what BMI refers to, the body mass index, that for you is a chunk because it's a meaningful chunk of information. So you can say BMI is a chunk. If you don't know what it means, then it's three chunks of information because BMI will be three separate chunks of meaningful information for you. So you can store five from five to nine, according to Miller. Other researchers, such as Cowan, for instance, have suggested that that's a bit too many. There's probably more like three or four chunks of information. Also, not all chunks are created equal because uh, larger chunks, so if you have a chunk that has more individual pieces, so if it, instead of being BMI, it were seven or eight letters that form a single chunk, uh, bigger chunks take up more space. So if you have bigger chunks, you'll have less capacity overall. Then eventually the information is passed on to the long-term memory store, where according to the multi-store memory model by Atkinson and Schifrin, you have essentially unlimited capacity. Um, originally the multi-store memory model also conceived of the long-term memory store as a unitary store. So basically all long-term memory goes into a single store. We don't believe that to be the case anymore. We will see later on when I talk about long-term memory how there are several different types of long-term memory. Similarly, in the multi-store memory model, um, short-term memory was conceived as a unitary store. And again, we'll see in the next section when I talk about working memory that we don't think that is the case anymore because we think that there are different components of short-term memory. Uh, essentially called working memory these days.